What up, Screen Fiends? I'm GB, and you're tuned in to Screenheads TV, where we like to discuss all the wonderful things appearing on your movie and your TV screens. In this episode, we're going to discuss last night's Walking Dead. That's going to be uh, The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 15, titled Something They Need. All right. Um, loved the episode last night. Um, I really thought it was... Definitely one of the best episodes of the season. Not in any particular order. I'll say so far, the three best episodes of this season was 7-1. I'm going to say 7-7. And I'm going to say this one, 7-15. So far, those are, I think, my three favorite episodes of this season. So far. Okay, so let's get into this. Um, We're going to break it down into the three segments that the show was basically about. So we have Maggie and Gregory at the hilltop. We have Sasha and Eugene Negan at the sanctuary. And we have Rick and the rest of the group at Oceanside trying to get the guns. So let's start in uh, the one that was the least amount of time in the episode. And that's going to be Maggie in the hilltop. Um, I don't know. A couple people I spoke to, they didn't really like that part of the episode. Almost everybody I spoke to about it already enjoyed the episode you know I usually watch it with a bunch of people and then you know I'm right on social media and texting my friends and whatnot right after the episode so some most people I spoke to liked the episode a lot but they didn't like the Maggie and Gregory stuff now here's what I'll say I enjoy it because I kind of know where the story's going uh you know I try not to do comic spoilers in the video but sometimes I have no choice um, but remember, a comic spoiler is not necessarily a spoiler for the show because they do change things so often and remix and work things around differently that they still hit you with enough surprises to where even with a comic spoiler, it doesn't spoil the show for you. Okay, so I know where they're going with the story of Maggie and Gregory. Most of you can see where it's going, where Maggie is basically going to be the leader of the hill, the hilltop. Um, you can see that not only through Maggie's actions and the way Gregory responds to her, but from the way the other hilltoppers respond to Maggie. Um, you, the one guy even calls her boss lady in this episode. So you got to like, you got to like that the way that they've been laying the little tracks of leader Maggie all the way back from season five, when they get to Alexandria, um, Maggie starts working with Deanna. Deanna's kind of teaching her how to be a leader. Maggie's, Deanna even says that Maggie's, I think, qualified to be a leader or whatever she says. Um, and then we have in uh, not too much leader stuff in season six for Maggie. It was mostly her um, stepping up to the plate as far as Glenn going out and trying to do something about Glenn and... Um, that's what most of her arc in season six, but there was still little tracks of her in Alexandria, um, taking on more of a leadership role. It was kind of like her and Rick were kind of sharing leadership, um, at Alexandria during season six. And then season seven, we have all her hilltop stuff and we see her really, really coming into being a great leader. And what better place for a farm girl to lead than the farming community of the hilltop. Remember, Maggie's from a farm. Herschel was a farmer. So it all makes sense for her character. Now, Gregory. Um, one thing that one of my friends said to me, and I actually saw something online today too, about Gregory was, all right, enough already. We already know he's a dick. We already know he's a scumbag. We already know he's not a good leader or a good person. But we don't know the extent to that. Up until recently... Uh, he hasn't shown an aggressiveness about him. Last episode with Jesus, there was a bit of aggression. And then this episode with Maggie, there was a bit of aggression where it looks like he's thinking, well, should I just stab her in the back? And then he starts to think, well, no, I'm a bitch. I'm a pussy. I can't do that. I can't live with myself that way. I can't even kill walkers which we see shortly after that. Big problem I had with the episode, I always have this problem, is ninja walkers. The way that they're able to sneak up on someone in a wide open area is ridiculous to me. 
when it's a wooded area or buildings around or houses around or they're in it's an interior, I get that. I totally get it. But when they're out in an open field, there is no way, reason, uh, or uh, it just doesn't make sense that a walker would be able to sneak up on you like that. Okay, but we see Gregory, he can't even kill a walker, let alone a person. All right. Um, there's not really much else to talk about on that front other than, you know, Gregory leaves. He tells Cal to get his shit. Get a vehicle ready. They got to go on a trip. Okay. Um, I think that was in this episode. It might have been the last episode, but I'm pretty sure it was in this episode. And I'm going to touch on this again later. Don't forget that the conversation Gregory had with Simon last episode. Okay, now let's move on. That's enough with the hilltop. Um, but you're going to really like where they're going to go with this story. Even if they don't tackle it exactly the way it happens in the comic, it's a very, very good part of the story. All right. Um, now we'll move to Rick and the Oceanside. I liked most of this. Um, a lot of people are beating up on Tara and the way she went in there with an unloaded gun and kind of didn't explain things too well, I guess, to some people. Um, but here's how I feel about Tara. She went in there with no bullets on purpose because she didn't want to kill anybody. And I think she knew that she could tell them there's not, not even any bullets in this gun if shit got real to let them know I, we did not come here to harm you. Remember, her whole basis of that scene is go out and talk to a leader. Go out and talk to Rick. Go out and see what he has to say. Um, I like the way they, they did the plan with the explosions outside. To me, it was a bit of a waste of dynamite. I think they could have found better ways and quieter ways to do it other than making a bunch of explosions attracting walkers and God knows who else. And wasting dynamite that could be very, very valuable. I know they got a shit ton of dynamite. That episode, uh, episode 9, Rockin' the Road. They got a shit ton of dynamite. So I'm sure they still have a whole bunch left. But why even waste a couple of sticks that you wasted to get those guns when I think you could have done it in a, a better way. You could have wrangled everybody up, I think, a little bit more effectively. How? I don't really know. Maybe with shots, but you don't want to waste bullets either. That's another problem I have with this scene. When the walkers come up, the group just starts letting off. Like you're wasting your bullets, dude. Now, in the comics, that actually comes into play very soon in some great, great, wonderfully crafted dialogue by Robert Kirkman for Negan um, into them still using bullets on walkers. So I might give that a pass if they decide to play that piece of dialogue out the way that they are. But to me, with the group and how smart they are, it just doesn't really make sense. Even with that dialogue, you would think that they would all go to melee weapons, knives, and, and blunt, ob, you know, blunt force objects as opposed to wasting all their bullets. The only one that makes sense in shooting is Daryl because he can retrieve his, his arrows. Okay, um, I don't like how the end result was the Oceanside saying, well, it's either all of us or none of us. I don't feel like that was very realistic. Those of them who wanted to fight, even though that's their family, even though they want to stay and protect the ones that stay behind, I feel like some of them would have um, gotten up and went. Like the girl with the short hair. I just feel like certain ones of them, certain of the Oceanside women, wanted to fight. And even though their leader was telling them no, just like we see people disobey Rick sometimes, I think we will, or we should have, but maybe it'll still happen had one of, a couple of these women disobey their leader and go off with Rick and them. But what I think they're doing, and it's, it's a little predictable in my opinion, the way they're handling it, is I think eventually these women will come, maybe not to the rescue, but they'll come at a time where manpower, woman power, any power is needed. Okay, um... So, I mean, that's basically it. They got the guns. We all knew they would get the guns. We just didn't know how it would go about it. They are, the group is behaving a tad bit like Negan. Look at it. They run in their spot. You know, they, they threaten not to hurt anybody. If you do what we want, give us the guns. Negan does the same thing. He comes in, says, look, I'm not going to hurt anybody. Just do what I want. Give me half your shit. They don't do it. Negan hurts people, kills people. 
If the Ocean Side didn't give up the guns, who knows what Rick and them would have done. I would like to believe they wouldn't have killed them or one of them or whatever, but it really looked like it was getting to that point. Especially with Michonne in the tree. She looked like she was really ready to um put a bullet in in Natanya. Latanya? Natanya's head. Um and I, if you peeped it like I did, you see Michonne is a trying to snipe a walker and you can see she's still not that nice with that sniper rifle that's going to come into play next episode i will get into that in my next video on the predictions for the finale um but that's pretty much it with the oceanside stuff we knew what was going to happen we just didn't know how it was going to get there and i liked how they brought in characters like francine and tobin even though they didn't have much to do or say they were there they were present um and they were ready to fight. Okay. So that's it for the the Rick uh, storyline, I believe. Oh, and I love the voiceover in the beginning of Rick telling Tara, even if it goes south, it's not on you. Don't worry about it. Don't feel bad about it. Um, people make their own choices. And if these people choose to fight against us, then we have no choice but to do what we got to do to get those guns so that we can take down Negan. Um, and I do understand the Oceanside ladies' uh, reluctance, you know. All of the men, all of the boys were killed in front of all of them. So I get why they want to run away and live secluded and all that. But how long do they think that's going to work before the saviors find them, you know? So I definitely could feel like you can count on, if not this season, at least next season at some point, some or all of the Oceanside ladies coming back into play for the war, not just for... Um, to add them to the communities later. Okay, moving on to my favorite part of the episode, even though it wasn't that much, the Sasha Eugene Negan stuff was done so well to me. First off, the Davy Sasha scene was ripped right from the comic and done perfectly with enough creepiness, and the dialogue was almost the same, the death was almost the same. Not that I'm saying everything always has to be the same. But I always appreciate and I always enjoy seeing stuff adapted from the comic book that was the good stuff from the comic. I'm going to do a video about this probably later in the week where there was a lot of missteps with The Walking Dead. And whatever, you know, problems, politics were going on in the background, there was a lot of missed opportunities for great storylines, great character arcs, and just great things to happen. And they didn't do those for whatever reason. But like I said, I'm going to do a video about that going forward. But this time, they nailed it. Everything about it was great. And the way they do it, in my opinion, and maybe just because it's, it's actors instead of images on a page of, of a graphic novel, Negan comes across to me as somebody who's very reasonable. In, he's a bad guy. Don't get me wrong, okay? I understand he's the villain of the piece and he's a scumbag. I get that. But in the comics, these are the two you get of Negan. Seriously funny to being uncomfortably funny to being scary as shit. This Negan is reasonable, normal human being who gives you uncomfortable funny who can be crazy. Not crazy as shit, but crazy enough. So when he had tells Sasha, it resonates with me so much more than it did in the comic that we're not animals, we're not monsters, we don't do rape. I wouldn't want to live in that world. I wouldn't want to work or live or behave or stay with a leader that lets those things happen. And I don't want to be the leader that lets those things happen. That comes across as real. It gives Negan another dimension, another layer to his character. Because I wholeheartedly believe, I'll do this more in the predictions, that next season we're going to get some Negan backstory and it's going to humanize him. And I'm not saying we're going to like him. I'm not saying we're going to love him. I'm not saying we're going to root for him. But we're going to understand him better. And we're going to get why he is the way he is, makes the decisions that he makes, and, um, and why he's such a bastard at this point. Okay, moving on. Um, and I like how he tries to recruit Sasha, just like how he tried to recruit Eugene, and kind of the way they try to recruit Daryl. He talks to them first. Says, make this choice. This is who we are. Come and live with us and live life on easy street. Pun absolutely intended. 
And I think that was the point of that song for Daryl, was to let you know we're all on Easy Street. You can be on Easy Street too if you just say that you're Negan and join us. And that's Negan's approach. You got it on Easy Street here. Sign up. Eugene did it. Daryl didn't. Sasha lied and said she's going to, I think. But she has other things in mind. Those of you who are confused, she was not asking Eugene for those uh, glass or knife or razor to kill herself. Yes, she wants to die. But she wants to do it in taking out Negan. Now you say, well, how do you know that, G? Easy. When he gives her the poison, she looks at it disappointed. Like, I can't kill Negan with this. And Eugene tells her 20 to 30 minutes it takes. I can't kill him with this. Do I think she's going to try and figure out a way? I do. But I don't think it's going to work out for Sasha. Um, and I'll do that in the prediction. Okay. But that scene where they show you the conversation through one side of the door. They only show you Eugene. And you hear Sasha and you believe her. You believe she wants to die. You believe everything she's saying. And everything she's saying is true and accurate. She's not lying to Eugene. But when they switch to the inside and you see that even though she's telling the truth and even though she's not lying, that she's got a plan and she's playing Eugene and she's playing to his pussy boy good notes that's in that character. When I say good notes, I mean good boy qualities where, where he's got a heart even though he's being a traitor right now, which at this point looks like I was totally wrong in my Eugene's not a traitor videos. Um, but I still think that's going to come back around full circle later. But that whole scene where he tells her a bit, um, even before that, when he tells her about how, you know, he thought he could do it, he thought he could be tough. Riding in that Eugene, riding in that RV was um, the best 37 minutes of his life where he felt like he mattered and he was doing something good, right? But the fear that Negan put in him canceled all that away. I loved <clears throat> everything they did with Sasha and Eugene in this episode, and it wasn't much. So for the, the, the I, it was more than I thought we were going to get, but the fact that it was handled so well just makes those scenes resonate with me so much more. I am upset. I have a complaint about every segment in last night's episode, but I love the episode. Uh, we should have seen Sasha get taken down. I know a lot of people are complaining about it. It's probably all over the internet. All my friends are complaining about it. Sasha's a badass. When she went in there, we should have got... A scene, maybe while Rick, while Rick was talking to Tara, we got snippets of Sasha going through the sanctuary, take out a few saviors, and then getting bagged up and caught. You know, Davey like, oh, wait, I got some rope right here. Awesome. I think that would have been great. But they didn't do it. Whatever. Um, okay. Yeah, that's it. Love the episode. I definitely give this one a 4.5... Uh, let's give it a 4 out of 5. There could have been a little bit more action, I thought. But all in all, solid episode. Got me so excited for next week. I'm so excited for next week. I can't wait to do my predictions video. I'm doing it next. And I can't wait to do videos all throughout the week. I got a bunch of stuff planned on the Sanctuary and on how Rick's team is going to fight Negan's team and all that stuff. So definitely tune back in for that. Um, if you want to see any of my other Walking Dead reviews, uh, I do discussions, predictions. Go back and check out some of my other videos in the TV Fix playlist or just scroll around to the page and I'm sure you'll find something that'll interest you. All right, that's it for today. Anything you, well, for this video anyway, anything else uh, you want to say, you want to comment, hit me up down below, show me some love, show me some unlove, whatever you'd like. Um, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And that's it for this video. You guys have a good day, and I will see you next time.